This is the first video for section 2.9 on power indices. In this lecture, I'll be talking about the shapley schubik power index. So remember that we're talking about weighted voting systems. And the notation here is that the first number we see is the quota. That's the number of votes, yes, that we need for a motion to, or a law or legislation, whatever we're considering to pass. And then after the colon, we have a bunch of numbers which list the weights of the various voters. And as we've seen in the previous section, the actual power that a voter wields isn't always obvious from just the number, the weight that that voter represents. So what we're doing in this section is looking at what we call a power index, which is a measurement of the actual power that that voter has in the weighted voting system. The power index we're going to consider in this video involves permutations of voters. So what a permutation is, is just an ordering of the voters. You imagine if you had your voters as actual people and that they're lining up in some specific order. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with every voter in that line voting no, and then one at a time in order, we're going to flip the vote of each voter from no to yes. And at some point, the motion is going to go from not passing. I mean, if everybody votes no, of course, that motion is going to fail. But at some point, as we flip people from no to yes, then eventually the motion will pass. And the voter that made the difference, the voter that when we flipped that voter, the motion went from not passing to passing, we say that that voter was the pivotal voter to that permutation. So that might sound kind of complicated, but I'm going to go through a few examples. Okay, so let's look at this weighted voting system. So again, our quota here is eight, and we're going to label our voters A, B, C, and D. And let's say that we had them in that order, A, B, C, D. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to line them all up and we're going to say, OK, for the start, we're going to say every single one of these voters is voting no. So how many votes do we have in favor? Well, zero, right? Nobody's voting in favor, so everybody's voting no, so the motion doesn't pass. OK, so now we're going to start flipping our voters. So instead of voting no, A is going to vote yes. Now how many votes do we have in favor? Well, now A's five votes go from being no votes to yes votes. So now we have five votes in favor, but our quota is eight. So that's still not going to make the motion pass. So we need to keep going. So now B's vote is going to go from no to yes. Now, how many votes do we have in favor? Well, B had four votes. So now we have five plus four, which is nine votes in favor. And since the quota is eight, now the motion passes. So B was the pivotal voter. B was the voter that when we flipped their vote from no to yes, the motion ended up passing. Let's do another one, C, B, A, D. So again, line the voters up in that order, C, B, A, D. We start with everybody voting no, 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 no. And we start flipping our votes in favor. And again, we're just gonna count how many votes do we have in favor at the time. If everybody's voting no, we start with a zero. Okay, C flips from no to yes. Remember, this one was C, so we're just labeling, labeling our voters alphabetically in the order they're listed. Okay, so C voted yes. Now we have three votes in favor, but that's not enough because our quota is eight. So we need to keep, flip, keep flipping. So B goes from no to yes. B had four votes, so now we have three plus four, which is seven votes in favor, but that's still not enough because my quota is eight. So now A's vote flips from no to yes. And now we have three plus four plus five, which is 12 votes in favor. That's way more than enough. So that means that A was the pivotal voter. So again, you go through the order, flipping from no to yes, and the first time you see the vote go from not passing to passing, that voter that you just flipped, that's the pivotal voter. Okay, so what's the shapley schubik power index? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at every possible permutation and count up the number of times that each voter was pivotal. So the shapley schubik power index for that voter is the fraction of the total number of permutations for which that voter was pivotal. So it's gonna be a fraction, and the top of the fraction is going to be the number of times that voter was pivotal. The bottom of the fraction is going to be the total number of permutations. Okay, so our first step is going to be to find all of the permutations. So if we have, for example, four voters, A, B, C, and D, like we had in the examples that we were just doing, what do all the permutations look like? Well, here's a way we can do it. And we can, we've seen these tree diagrams in, uh, a long time ago, but we're going to see them again here. So what I can do is think about, okay, what's the first voter in line? Right, so again, we're thinking about lining up our voters in order. So the first voter could be A, but it also could be B, it could be C, and it could be D. What's the second voter in line? Well, if the first voter was A, then the second voter could be B or C or D. It can't be A because A was already first in line. 
if B was first in line, then the second voter could be A, it could be C, or it could be D. Right Again, it can't be B because B was already first up. If C was the first voter in the order, then the second voter could be A, or it could be B, or it could be D. And if D was first, then it could be A, B, or C second. Now we know who's second and who's first, so who could be third? Well, if A was first and B was second, then the third voter could be C or D. And then if C was third, then the only voter remaining would be D, and so the ordering in this branch of my tree would be A, B, C, D. If I did A first, B second, D third, then C has to be fourth, and the ordering there is A, B, D, C. Clean that up a little bit. A, B, D, C is what I meant to write there. There we go. And so on. So this gets a little bit nasty, right? We've got a lot, a lot of permutations. I'm going to talk about the number of permutations in just a second. Let me do a couple more. So if A was first and C was second, that's the branch we're looking at here. So then B could be third or D could be third. If we went A, C, B, then the last one has to be D. If we went A, C, D, then the last one has to be B. And so that gives us a couple more permutations. This one is A, C, B, D. This one is A, C, D, B. And so on. So you'd fill out your little tree diagram and get all the permutations. Okay, so you may notice that we're getting factorials again. So we have, for example, if we have four voters, we have four choices for who's first, three choices for who's second, two choices for who is third, and one choice for who is fourth. That's going to give us a total of 24 permutations. And in general, that factorial number that we've seen earlier in the course, that's going to crop up again to give us the number of permutations. And one of the examples that we used for a weighted voting system was the Electoral College in the United States. We've got 51 voters in that system, the 50 states plus the District of Columbia. And so 51 factorial, 51 times 50 times 49, that's a gigantic number. That's actually a 67 digit number would give us the total number of permutations. So it'd be really, really impossible to try to do something like this by hand with that many voters, but we could use computers to think about it in an automated way. Okay, so back to our example. So it turns out here's a list of all the permutations, right? So uh, you'll, you'll be provided this uh, for, for my course. So we don't have to worry about filling out the full tree diagram, but I just wanted to use that to illustrate the number of permutations we could see. So now that we have all the permutations, now what we want to do is find the pivotal voter for each permutation. And we already did a couple of these earlier in this video, but I went through again and found the pivotal voter for each one. So then the next step would be to go through and count how many times was each voter pivotal. So for example, voter A was pivotal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times. So A's power index would be 10 divided by 24. 24 is the total number of permutations and A was pivotal 10 times. We keep going like that. We see that B was pivotal six times, C was pivotal six times, and D was pivotal two times. And so we get these fractions. Those are the shapley schubach power indices. Indices is just the plural of the word index. So the shapley schubach power indices for each voter are listed there. Okay, let's work through another example from start to finish. So we've got a three voter system here. Our quota is 10. And again, I'll label my voters A, B, and C. It's not quite as bad with only three voters to figure out all the permutations. Let's make our little tree diagram. A could be first, B could be second, uh, sorry, A could be first, B could be first, or C could be first. If A is first, then either B or C is second. If B is first, then either A or C is second. And if C is first, then either A or B is second. If A is first and B is second, then C has to be third. If A is first and C is second, then B has to be third. This one is going to be B, A, C. This one will be B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A. So we have six permutations here, A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. Okay, so now that we have all the permutations, we have to figure out which voter is pivotal in each permutation. So let's start with A, B, C. So if we start with A voting, just A voting yes, that's only six votes, which isn't enough to pass. 
Then we move on to B flipping to yes. Now we have A and B voting in favor. That's 10 votes. That's enough to pass. So B is pivotal. A, C, B. If A votes yes, not enough by itself. A and C vote yes. That's nine votes, still not enough. A, C, and B voting yes. Well, that's everybody voting yes. So of course it's going to pass then. And so B was pivotal there. Next up is B, A, C. B votes yes by themselves. That's only four votes in favor. B and A vote in favor, that's 10, that's enough, so A is pivotal. B, C, A, B by themselves is four, that's not enough. B and C together, that's seven votes, still not enough. A votes in favor, that's everybody, so that's gonna pass, so A is pivotal. Next up is C, A, B. C votes yes by themselves, that's only three votes in favor. C and A together, that's nine votes, still not quite enough. And then B flips to yes, that'll be passing, so B was pivotal. And then finally, C, B, A. C votes in favor by themselves. That's only three votes, not nearly enough. C and B together, that's seven votes, still not enough. And then A voting yes, that's everybody voting yes. So the motion will pass there. So what was the count of how many times each voter was pivotal? A was pivotal, let's see, one, two, three times. So A's count is three. B was pivotal one, two, three times. So B's count is three. C was never pivotal, so C's count is zero. And there were six total permutations. So A's Shapley-Schubach power index is three out of six. B's Shapley-Schubach power index is three out of six. And C's Shapley-Schubach power index is zero out of six. So we saw that voter C in that previous example had zero power, which is an indication that they are a dummy voter. Now on the flip side, if we had had a dictator voter, remember a dictator voter is a voter that passes a motion all by themselves, well, then the Shapley-Schubach power index for that voter would be one. Every single permutation would have that voter being pivotal because nothing is going to pass until that voter flips their vote from no to yes. So the Shapley-Schubach method is not the only way of doing it. This is not the only way of measuring the power of voters. Next time, we're going to learn about a different method that relies on thinking about coalitions instead of permutations. Remember, a coalition is a group of voters that work together to all vote the same way. Now, that new method will still have the property that dummy voters have zero power and dictators have all the power. So that's still a good indication of when your number is somewhere in between, then that's a measurement of how much power that voter has.